I have to make my way through Oklahoma as quickly as possible, which is really sad because I actually love Oklahoma. And today is sad for another reason too. Today is actually the day that we're going to leave Route 66. But before we do so, we have to stop here in Elk City, Oklahoma to check out this. The National Route 66 Museum. I don't know that it's actually our country's official Route 66 Museum or the people in Elk City were just very clever about picking a name. But seeing as how for the time being we have to leave Route 66, I thought it was a fitting thing to do before we got off the old mother road. I have never been here before, but I am looking forward to going inside. Not just because I love Route 66, but also because it's honestly freaking cold outside. I'm right in the middle of the bubble of bad weather now in the Midwest. Hoping that there's no more tornadoes or anything, but it's fine right now. Museum time. <laughs> you start your visit to the Route 66 Museum by watching a 15 minute movie. Oh, here it goes. This place is divided up into several small museums, the first of which in here is the Transportation Museum. It's pretty awesome in here, but it's also dead silent. Seriously, it's so quiet. Look at this area, it's like a mock drive-in theater. They even have a real back seat of a car. Oh uh, yeah. It's just like high school. I'm all alone. <laughs> That's playing the movie for me. Ooh, I love this one. Just past the back of a car, we have the front of a car. I'm not sure why we can't just have one whole car, but I'm happy anyways. I just like sitting in things. Ooh, ooh, scoot over here. <laughs> All right, old school. If you push the gas pedal, you start a simulated cruise down Route 66. Whoa making engine sounds. It's so realistic. Yep. This is pretty much what it was like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> what the heck was that? Okay, that noise is giving me anxiety. I've had enough. There's also a bunch of motorcycles and an airplane in here. Boy, after I pushed all that stuff, it got a lot louder. I feel more comfortable. Look at that cool airplane up there. Also, there's this fire truck here. This looks a lot like the full-size, real-life version of what you see at Disneyland with that little fire engine. It's a 1917 model fire truck. And uh, it was really hard to squeeze in here. A fire pole. <laughs> this is always a good sign. <laughs> oh yeah, fire pole time. I feel just like Batman. Last but not least, in here is the weird Popeye room. No clue why Popeye the Sailor Man gets his own room at a Route 66 museum. But why not? There's a lot of really old school, interesting Popeye stuff in here. I did not realize one could even collect Popeye. You guys remember that old Robin Williams Popeye movie? For whatever reason, man, that movie scared me as a kid. Just something about it. Also, there's a shelf over here that's halfway split between the Flintstones and the Peanuts. Hashtag Route 66. Okay, on to building two. Oh, it doesn't look like the weather's improved any. Ooh. Building two over here is supposed to be the actual Route 66 museum itself. And since it's now starting to rain kind of hard, actually, I'm glad we're going inside. Wow. <laughs> Look at all this stuff. Ooh, it's one of those bubbles. You stand under it and you can listen to stuff. No time. I'm weird with museums because sometimes I want to take like seven hours and read every single thing. And sometimes I'm just like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. What's next? What's next? Today is one of those days. Hey, look. This is where we were. Remember when we were in Ludlow and when we were over here in Williams and we stood on the corner there. We did other things over in this area. Oh, speaking of Robin Williams' Popeye, dude, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Look at this old model. Boy, oh, these bubbles keep attacking me. That seriously sounds like Troy McClure is narrating. <laughs> Look at the old sexist treehouse. 
America. And this couple here just got married. And where are they heading? Tucumcari. Remember yesterday when I made that joke about that rundown motel being a honeymoon spot? Looks like I wasn't joking at all. Congratulations, people. Look at this old school Indian trading post. I don't know if this is accurate to what we've experienced so far, but we've certainly seen a lot of Indian trading posts, haven't we? We even saw a live rattlesnake, that's weird. Oh yeah, all of this is looking very, very familiar. Except the old army jeep. This is amazing. This bubble's talking about Tucumcari. That's so weird. Tucumcari, it was yesterday. Knock it off. Look at this thing over here. This is awesome. There's the tourist court thing. We've been looking at a lot of those. And this is Doc Hudson, the Chevy version. I'm not sure what the skis and stuff really have to do with Route 66, but this apparently has something to do with filming the Grapes of Wrath. At least that's my guess. Don't judge me. I've never seen the movie, although I have read the book. They make you. You know, for being a relatively small building, this place is actually super cool. Look at this room here. This is awesome. I'm familiar with the Corvette Stingray. But until this moment, I'd never heard of the Studebaker Hawk. I gotta be honest with you, this thing looks pretty awesome. I bet I'm getting better gas mileage in that Nissan Versa rental car that I have out there. But I would look so much sexier if I were driving this. Alrighty then. Last but not least, the replica gift shop. Although, fair enough, because I think if we've learned anything about Route 66, it's that the gift shop is essential. Not just in a joking way, but I mean, that's the lifeblood that keeps things open on the side of the highway. And I, for one, am proud to support many of them. Ooh, oh, wrong side, there we go. Out here, beyond all the rain, is the Old Town Museum. I really don't have much time, so I can only go look at it quickly if I go at all. I don't know if it's gonna be worth it. Oh, what the heck. You only have one life, right? Might as well check it out. Dang, I would love to stop and read the signs about the old Cruz Farmhouse and the Elk City High School Bell and the Rock Bluff School and all the others. But it's raining in my face. I just now realized I could have pulled the car up here, but it's okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, let's see here. Mr. and Mrs. O.H. Young built this old house. Oh, well, this must be them. Mr. Young, how you doing there? Oh, Mrs. Young? Hmm. She doesn't look that young to me. <laughs> no offense. This violin was carried out of the South by a former slave. Here's the least white wedding dress I've ever seen. A bed that somebody slept in. And all kinds of other really creepy stuff. I'm glad this rope is here to protect us from Annabelle. And from this kid that owns her. <laughs> but wait, put your creepiness. I mean, you're no harm. Actually, just when I thought this place couldn't get any creepier, I looked down at the pamphlet and found out that after this was a home, they used it as a funeral parlor. So there were a lot of dead people in here once. <laughs> that doesn't weird me out at all. I'm not afraid. Oh my God, what is that? That's what they do in salons? Oh, forget that. Madam, this is a very important room. This is the war room where we learn about war but we also learn about peace i have to walk back past that thing i really don't like it <laughs> yeah you doing there you stay right there there's also an upstairs here that has a rodeo museum in it i honestly really don't know anything about rodeos so this is pretty fascinating for me. I've actually honestly never been to a rodeo. I really wish I had more time to stay here and learn about it. I guess these guys here, the Butler brothers, were famous rodeo putters honors. Apparently of the world's largest rodeo. So I think this is a collection of all of their stuff and cool old rodeo artifacts. Those rodeo guys are a tough bunch. But they love those silky shirts. And those breezy, breezy pants. Just when I was about to say at least there was one room in this place that wasn't terrifying. What the heck is that? What is that? Dude, regular clowns are bad enough. Y'all got rodeo clowns too? Oh. Yeah, that's weird. I guess it makes sense though. I mean, even cowboys need to laugh, right? Oh yeah, also like everywhere else in Texas and Oklahoma, they got a lot of guns in here. Some swords, but mostly guns. The weather still sucks outside, but we gotta go. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye bye. Yes, I love Oklahoma. I love this song. I love America. 
because we can't do a lot of stopping in this state, maybe this list of Oklahoma facts that they gave me back in Elk City will, uh, will help us pass the time here. Oklahoma is known for its red soil, which is red because of the iron content. Oklahoma has 2,500 different types of soil. That's a lot of soil. Boy, they really soiled themselves. The average size of a farm today in Oklahoma is 405 acres. We hope you had an enjoyable and educational visit. Please come and see us again and tell your friends about us. Oh, we're gonna tell everyone about Oklahoma. Everyone. Well, as these European bikers have also figured out, just one town over in Clinton, Oklahoma, there's also another Route 66 Museum, the Oklahoma Route 66 Museum. First the national, now the Oklahoma one. Well, I didn't plan on stopping anywhere else or filming anything else today. I was trying to keep the vlog a little shorter, but what the hey, since we're skipping over the rest of the state, might as well see more. Oklahoma Route 66 Museums. I'm so confused. Have I ever mentioned to you that one of the nicknames for Route 66 is the Will Rogers Highway? We can talk more about Will Rogers another time, but I just really like this quote. We are here just for a spell and then pass on. So get a few laughs and do the best you can. Live your life so that whenever you lose, you're ahead. I love that. I wish I had said that. Eh, I don't need to say it. I live it. Wow. Are you kidding me with this? This is already awesome. Also, there's strawberry fields playing. Look at this. This is the first Oklahoma Highway Patrol car. Like the actual first one. I wish they were still driving these things, then I could outrun them. <laughs> All right, one more time. Oh, look at these doors. Door goals. Oh. Dude, this is awesome. Like right from the gate, this place is amazing. It's awesome seeing so many places we've been. And so many jokes we've all heard before. Baby rattlers never get told. I love that joke. Dude, this place is so well designed. Look at this. Okay, you learn a little bit more in this one. You see all these symbols up here? These are symbols for old highways. We take roads for granted now, but back in the day before there was a highway system with numbers and stuff, you just had to go down these random roads that would be named stuff like the Cotton Belt Route or the Lincoln Highway and stuff. And along the road out in the country, they'd have these different signs or flags or markings or colors to help lead you, oh, I'm on the right highway, I'm on the right highway, I'm on the right highway. But what about once you got into the city? Then you'd have 50,000 of these placards all pointing you different directions. That would be super confusing, which is why our national highway system was invented, where the even numbers are east and westbound things, and the odd numbers are north and south highways. Then along came this guy from Oklahoma, Cyrus Avery, who basically championed Route 66. He was the chairman of the State Highway Association of Oklahoma, and it was him and his buddies that picked out Route 66, the actual route itself. And also, they wanted the number 60 at first, but they ended up going for 66, because that one was already taken, mostly because it just sounded catchy. So even though Route 66 actually starts in Chicago, you could say it was born in Oklahoma. This museum's awesome. Like, there's all these different things. Like, this one talks about the filling station and the different gas stations. This one talks about the Dust Bowl and the Okies and then the New Deal era. And there's all these cool old displays like the old visible gas pumps. They were called visible gas pumps because you could see the gas inside and see how much gas was coming down into your car. I guess people really didn't trust other people back then. Look at this old tiny car. This is something. Look at this water bag here. Back in the days before radiators were very efficient, you had to have a bag of water that you would carry through the desert so you had an extra gallon of water or whatever it was in a bag because I guess we didn't have plastic back then to refill your radiator and not overheat although I think I think this truck has worse problems I'll let you get back to work buddy dude this museum is awesome and I really wish I could spend time reading each and everything like here's a whole deal about the creation of the parking meter people forget that so much traffic was created by all this commotion on route 66 other highways too but mostly route 66 the things like the parking meter had to be invented to stop cars from just blocking up the streets and later the interstate that ended up killing route 66 had to be invented because there was so much traffic on route 66 it was a victim of its own success 
An old IKEA came up with our modern interstate system. If you do not specifically take time to get off the highway and stop and travel down the little roads and see the main streets, you won't see anything. So as much as some of you guys on Twitter and stuff are telling me that I'm inspiring you to take your own road trips, make sure you take a lot of time. At some point in the relatively near future, I want to take a whole road trip down Route 66, and then all the way back on it. This time, I'm just going to the East Coast to see my buddy Tyler, and I was gonna to go to the Mississippi River on the way, so I'm kinda of going up and then back down. But even on this trip, I thought by now that I would be past the Mississippi River, past Hannibal, Missouri, and well on my way to the East Coast, but just stopping the amount that I've stopped to look at things in the briefest of glances takes a super long time. So if you're gonna go out on the road, make sure you give yourself a lot of extra time. Seriously, look at all these awesome little motels. We saw the Blue Swallow, we haven't seen any of these other ones. There's still a lot of Route 66 left to do. And a lot of other Route 66 stories and types of people and roads and history eras and things to talk about. <laughs> I wanna stay on the road forever. But look, they have a little movie to watch here. Only their movie is about how Route 66 became kind of abandoned. Their movie here is sad. The thing is, the highway didn't die. What? You know what, they're right. Route 66 isn't dead. It's very much alive. People like us who are interested in it are keeping it alive. Going up and down the highway, shopping at all those tiny little gift shops, buying gasoline and Mountain Dew and stickers and magnets and all that stuff. Taking pictures and sharing videos like this and sort of spreading the culture of Route 66. All that stuff makes sure that the culture keeps going and that Route 66 never dies. All right, it's time to leave this museum and say our symbolic farewell to Route 66. After a while, crocodile. I'm sad. I don't want to leave it. Must resist temptation. Must escape final gift shop. Oh. Finally, I finally got a million dollars and it only cost me one dollar. Is this how Donald Trump did it? Sad. Well, as unhappy as I am to leave Route 66, I am stoked on new adventures and seeing my buddy Tyler. Make sure and check out my t-shirts and hats and all the other links and stuff down in the description and if things keep going well and keep going the way they're going, then hopefully we'll be back on Route 66 before the end of the year and do the entire thing, Chicago to LA or vice versa. For the moment though, I gotta get to driving. So I'll see you guys a little farther on down the road. Bye-bye. This past November, this young man became the first successful male country artist to come out of the closet as a proud gay man. He's had four number one Billboard singles and sold over six million albums. Please welcome for the first time to the HRC stage, Dove Award winning and Grammy nominated artist, Ty Herndon. The world just lost Two lonely people The world just lost Two broken hearts The odds were against it But baby, here we are In our own little place In our own little corner This old cold world Has gotten a little warmer For the rest of my life Gonna hold you in my arms and when they carved my stone, all they need to ride on it. Once left a man who got all he ever wanted. Tell me something, who could ask for more, yeah. And to be living in a moment you would die for. If we never get rich on what money can buy. It don't matter to me, I'll tell you why I've got it all when I'm holding you this way You see, I live to love you, I die to keep you 
safe inside these arms that lead you. I'll be loving you with the very last breath I take. And when they carve my stone, all they need to ride on it. Once left a man who got all he ever wanted. Tell me something, who could ask for more? And to be living in a moment you would die for. Ashes to ashes and dust into dust. I'll lay beside you forever in love. And when they carve my stone, all they need to ride on it. Once left a man who got all he ever wanted. Tell me something, who could ask for more? And to be living in a moment. Love. Tell me something, who could ask for more? That to be living in a moment you would die for. You would die for. Get married to whoever you want to in the state of Texas. You would die for. Thank you so much. What an honor. What an absolute honor it is to be standing up here tonight. An out and proud gay man in the state of Texas. <laughs> now we'll tell you, Thomas here, this is my friend Thomas. He's a straight ally. They just had a brand new little baby, he and his wife, Mr. Thomas Becker. Thank you. My partner made sure, made me uh, promise to tell you guys that so there wouldn't be any rumors, you know, that we're, <laughs> Thomas and I were together or anything, so. Although, I mean, I, you know, you are handsome, so it's all good. Thank but. you, thank you, thank you. I, uh, for those of you who have, are not familiar with me, my name is Boyd Tyrone Herndon, and I grew up in a very small town in South Alabama where the rite of passage was Hunting, fishing, working on cars, having a girlfriend by the time you were seven or eight, you know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the first time my dad took me, uh, took me deer hunting, I was about eight years old and I had my new shotgun. And we sat in that deer stand for what felt like 20 hours of awkward conversation with your dad, you know. And then finally, here comes the deer running through the forest. And I think my dad might have known there was a problem when I jumped down, ran in front of the gun, and said, get out of here, they're going to kill you. <laughs> it's true. Well, you know, I knew I, was, I knew I was a little bit different by the time I was 10 years old. My mom argues with that a little bit because she said around eight years old is when the uh, underwear ads out of JCPenney catalogs was, were missing. And she said that publicly. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> but by the time I was 11 years old, I was raised in a very evangelical family. and We were traveling all over the country. I was a child prodigy, a child preacher. Seeing people get saved and come to the Lord. And one day, we had a visiting evangelist, and he preached on the sins of homosexuality. I didn't really quite understand what that word meant. I just knew I was one. So in an instant, I was changed. And I wasn't changed in a good way. I was transformed from this vibrant kid and to this little shy guy who had no confidence who was broken. 
all a matter of 10 minutes. And I carried that with me almost my entire life. Then one day I found out I wasn't broken. I found out I was made perfectly in the image of God. Yeah. Every inch of me, every bit of me, just the way I was intended to be. So when I get to go around and talk to these kids sometimes, I make sure I tell them that. And not only are they made perfect, but they have a greater responsibility now. They have a great responsibility to go out there and be the best they can be with who they are and be leaders and be gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, whoever you are, just be the best at it. So I got to write some songs here recently and um, got to go to the Grammy Awards, got a little nomination, kind of cool. Katy Perry told me that her mom had my cassettes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I hope she tweets that. All right. Thank you all for letting me be here tonight. God bless you. God bless you for having me. I'm so proud to be a part of this family. I am. Sometimes the mountains tower high above you. Sometimes the curtain's just too fast to swim. Life can carry you all kinds of places. Journey on. Sometimes in the moment of your weakness, when you're on the edge of giving in Just hold your heart before it falls to pieces And journey on Journey on, hold your head above the water Journey on, you can weather out this storm Journey on, there's a better day coming, a better day than you've ever known. Journey on, someone's waiting by the river, waiting there to take you by the hand. So make the most of all that you've been given. Journey on. Anybody's ship can take on water. You gotta make a choice to sink or swim. Just grab a piece of rubble from the wreckage. Journey on. Too many times your heart will leave you stranded. And you will bear the scars of where you've been. Don't be afraid to ask for new direction yet. Yeah. Journey on. Journey on, hold your head above the water. Journey on, you can weather out this storm. Journey on, there's a better day coming. A better day than we have ever known. Journey on, someone's waiting by the river. Waiting there to take you by the hand To make the most of all that you've been given The journey on the journey on, people 
Let's journey on. Thanks, everybody. God bless y'all. Thanks for having me.